This is the end of FNAF theories as we know. It starts with the biggest FNAF mystery of all time that's finally been solved, the box. In my previous video, I solved what it used to be. Scott Coffin himself said the content of the box has changed. And it turns out you can actually search into the files of the box to find out how to open it. The code clearly states the locks must be clicked nine times to remove them. It also tells us greater than or equal to eight. FNAF 4, the game where we see the box, has eight nights total. And since it's greater than or equal to, the eighth night is programmed as our final chance to open the box, but it never appears on the eighth night. What if it appeared somewhere else? We know the big key surrounding this box is the fact that it's all the pieces put together. Scott basically confirmed it. And since Scott changed the content of the box after FNAF World, we're left here. He said himself he didn't like the way FNAF World was taking it and decided to change the lore. But like I said, the lock of the box clicks nine times. And we know the content of the box is at least related to the spirits as they're the only other thing in the franchise referred to as pieces put together. But where would we even find a reference to the spirits or a nine again? Out of 50 selectable animatronics in Ultimate Custom Night, exactly nine of them bring up piecing together of the angry spirits including the one you should not have killed. In the high school Chica cutscene in the same exact game, the lockers cut off after the first three and skip all the way to nine. I think it's safe to say we should take a look into this game. The main concept behind this game is all the spirits getting their revenge, but I did some digging on the most important spirit in the games, Crime Trap. Oh my God, I am about to blow your mind. Scott filled these games with intentional Easter eggs, which were supposed to give us clues to the mystery of this whole story, which was also tied with the box. Ready? The crying child's memory is actually behind almost everything we see in the game. Memory and agony of crying child's miserable childhood is soaked into the FNAF world, leading to all our events following the bite of 83. Let me explain. It turns out the games have been supporting this answer this entire time. The removal of the agony is brought up in Henry's speech. And the memory of everything that started this can finally begin to fade away as the agony of every tragedy should. And in the Silver Eyes novel, this exact idea of agony is referenced again, claiming not ghosts, but memories can linger amongst places and objects. All it takes for it to stick is a traumatic event. I could think of one. Even in Pizzeria Simulator, Candy Cadet tells us an important story about a boy who has a red snake. And it's literally the answer to everything. A snake eats five kittens, and overwhelmed with guilt, the boy cuts open the snake and pieces together the remains. Pretty dark. What if I told you a red snake is a symbol for transformation and a symbol for a strong, powerful emotion that lingers, just like agony? If only we had a hint to connect the crying child to this agony. Oh, there's a direct reference. The transformation of this agony is present everywhere. He sees a boy holding a purple balloon. Look who pops up later on holding almost the exact same color. Mangle exists broken because that's how we see Mangle through crying child's eyes. Why the hell would Toy Chica not have a beak in FNAF 2 exactly? how the crying child sees her. Scott has literally been screaming the exact same hint at us. Dream theory can't be real because FNAF 2 isn't a dream. Yet we see crying child's memories seeping through the animatronics. Literally seeping through the animatronics. Wait a minute. Crying child has five plushies throughout the game. He brings them along with him and calls them his friends. But how do imaginary friends work in the eyes of a child? Well, the child essentially gives him life. The crying child and the puppet both have the exact same tear track. They have the same exact dark stripe pattern. The puppet gives the animatronics life exactly how the crying child gives life to his imaginary friends. It's all connected. The puppet is based on an interpretation of himself. Even the laughing kid seen by the crying child makes fun of him for hiding under tables. Look at that. Now we literally have an animatronic that hides under tables. Crying child's brother jump scares him exactly like the animatronics do in FNAF 1. His brother in particular even references Foxy's jump scare where he jumps out from behind something. Crying child's memories are split into pieces in this way. Exactly like the pieces of the box and the pieces he's promised will be put back together again. Let's cut to that scene again. Under this theory, Crying Child's memories are split amongst each of his childhood friends, each getting sent off with a piece of him. We literally watch it happen. This is why he is broken and must be put together. You see him in Fredbear's mouth, yes, he isn't looking too good, but he clearly isn't in pieces. The pieces are referring to his memories splitting up in the animatronics that are later possessed with spirits. Need more proof? Let's look back at that snake story one more time. We know the snake eats the five kittens and is then cut open for the kittens to be reassembled. The five kittens being put together are the five main spirits, all containing part of the crying child finally being whole again. The five kittens are stuffed into the mouth of the red snake, Agony, just as the five ghosts 
most kids are stuffed into the animatronics. But due to this agony left behind, the spirits are left to possess the suits, doomed to a miserable fate. The boy cutting the snake is a direct reference to the dismantling of the suits. As we see in the mini games, when the animatronics are taken apart, the spirits come out. They're meant to come together to form the crying child. Exactly how the kitten is pieced together in the story. But I've been hiding something from you. Out of all three Candy Cadet stories, the one with the red snake is the only one where the pieces are put in the box. You piece the remains together and put the kitten back into the shoe box. Crying child is in our box. Happiest day literally acts as the pieces being put together. All the friends with pieces of crying child are free to make him whole again. I will put you back together. This is why we can literally see his pieces slowly leaving him. This is why all the ghost kids we encounter look exactly like him. This is why his manifestations of his life's events become reality. It finally ends when it's all put to rest. Pizza Simulator acts as the ending to the series, which is why the layout is designed to look like the box. This is exactly where Henry remarks about the agony finally fading, the new content of the box. Finally, after the great fire, all the agony, all the memories, the content of the box can be at peace.